You can watch on your tablet, phone, and even on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV. Visit MillersvilleAthletics.com slash watch, download the Millersville Game Day app, or get the PSAC Network app on your smartphone. Smoking or, and or the use of other tobacco products is not allowed. Anyone wishing to smoke or make use of these products must do so outside of the Millersville University campus, and all items must be extinguished or disposed of prior to re-entering. Also, fans, consumption, or the possession of alcohol is prohibited. Today's NCAA field hockey contest is between the visiting Huskies of Bloomsburg and your Millersville Marauders. The officials for today's game are Mallory Federoff and Susie Sutton. That's why I'm wearing these. It's <laughs> awful. It messes me up so much. The visiting, visiting Huskies. Huskies. Number one, Number one Erica, Erica Krebs. Krebs. Number two, two Allie McKay. McKay. Number, three, Number three, Callie, Callie Edwards. Edwards. Number nine, Number nine Rachel, Rachel Strachbein. Number 13, Number 13 Tally Wayner. Number 16, Number 16 Jackie, Jackie Schrager. Schrager. Number 17, Number 17 Photo Tisiolis. Number 22, Number 22 Annie Klinger. Number 23, Willow Perkins. Perkins. Number 26, 26 Tessa, Tessa Hoffman. Hoffman. And in goal, number 62, Hannah, Hannah Bernard. Bernard. Head coach Head for the coach Huskies, Huskies is Nikki Hartraff. Assistant coaches for Bloomsburg are Courtney Knoll, Jan Hutchinson, and Lindsey Castle. Now, let's meet, meet the starting lineup, lineup for your Millersville Marauders. Marauders. A, junior a junior from Valley from Center, Center, California, California number four, four Madeline Skelly. Skelly. A senior a from senior Hummelstown, from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, number five, Eliza Mizak. A sophomore from Millthorpe, Australia, number six, Annabelle Tierney. A senior from Lidditz, Pennsylvania, number 10, JC St. John. A junior from Easton, Pennsylvania, number 17, Erica Tarsi. A sophomore from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, number 19, Meredith Fagan. A junior from Hershey, Pennsylvania, number 20, Alexis Gazio. A junior from East Petersburg, Pennsylvania, number 22, Kira Brakefield. A junior from Chadsburg, Pennsylvania, number 24, Jordan Goddard. A redshirt sophomore from Mannheim, Pennsylvania, number 28, Sol Ortiz Kreiner. And in goal, a freshman from Enola, Pennsylvania, number double zero, Katie Baker. Head coach for the Marauders in her 11th season is Shelly Barron. The assistant coaches for Millersville are Allie McAvoy Campbell and Sam Rumler. At this time, please rise, remove your caps, and face the American flag for the playing of our national anthem. We would like to remind all fans of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and Millersville University encourage and promote good sports. Good welcome in to Crist Field at Beamsdurfer Stadium here on the campus of Millersville University. Some field hockey for you tonight. The host of Marauders, 3-1 and one on the year. 
hosting the Bloomsburg Huskies. They are also three and one. Two PSAC teams here tonight, although this does this is a non-conference contest, does not count in the conference standings. These two teams will meet again on Halloween, October 31st uh, at Bloomsburg. That's a 4 o'clock start. That game will count in the standings. So nothing conference-wise on the line tonight, but of course national rankings are a thing, and tonight's result will influence that. Millersville currently ranked fifth in the nation in the NFHCA national coaches poll. Bloomsburg eighth as of this morning. So number five, Millersville versus number eight, Bloomsburg. There's just a glut of PSAC teams in that poll. In addition to the two teams today, we've got uh, East Stroudsburg sitting at number one, Westchester at three, Shippensburg at four, and Kutztown at nine. So just like it is every season, PSAC teams making up so much of the national field hockey climate. We're about to get underway here. 35 minute halves and Bloomsburg will control it. Last time out, Millersville, a 2-0 win over IUP, the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. It was a nice bounce back win after the Marauders fell to Westchester last week, last Wednesday night. And we'll see if they can continue their winning ways here tonight. The rain has stopped just about in the last hour or so. It was basically raining all day, so the turf very wet, and field hockey players like that because the ball rolls so much quicker, so much smoother. If you've ever been to a U.S. women's national team game out at Spookanook Sports here in Lancaster County, they wet the turf before the game. They have got sprinklers. They wet the turf at halftime just to keep that the roll of the ball consistent. Millersville has the ball in the attacking third. Does lose possession. Alexis Gazio, you'll see her attacking down that left wing this afternoon. For Bloomsburg, keep an eye out. Their two top scorers, Tessa Hoffman, the junior from Sealands Grove, and Erica Krebs, a senior. Hoffman's got four goals, Krebs three on the season. And the Huskies trying to attack into the circle. They do. And the shot with a cross just rolls in front of Cage. And the Marauders will come out with it. And the foul goes their way. Long ball played up down the sideline. And that's what Millersville will look to do. Bit by bit, just start inching that ball forward, try to get it into the circle, earn some penalty corners, earn some easy shots on goal. That's how they've found a lot of success this season, a lot of goals from those corners. And a couple from open play as well. We'll see what this evening brings for the Ville. That's a nice pass there. Two Krebs in the central part of the pitch. She got it into the circle, but that is a foul on her. That'll be 16 and out for Millersville. Tarsi couldn't quite get to that ball. 
but it is out on Bloomsburg. Millersville maintains possession. Nice spin move, nice dribbling on that far side. And Gazio earns the foul. She will restart. Finds Kira Breakfield. Just the engine that makes this offense go. She's into the circle. Shot on Cage, deflected away. Great opportunity. And it will be, I believe, a long hit for Millersville. Breakfield just found her way into the circle. Created some chaos, and Laville maintains possession. That took a nasty deflection off the stick of Erica Tarsi. And here comes Bloomsburg. And the ball won back. We've got a card, I believe. Ortiz Kreiner will have to go off now for two minutes. So. Bloomsburg, man advantage here early in the game. We'll see if they can take advantage. So Bloomsburg has some time here. A little miscontrol. But the pass does find... The stick of Emily Alker. And she'll have it. Gives it up to Tessa Hoffman, their leading scorer. And gets by one. Crosses into the box. Received well. Ball still alive. And the cross again. Oh, it's going to deflect, and it's going to be in the cage. An early goal for the Bloomsburg Huskies. They take the one nothing lead. And this looked like Tessa Hoffman just had a bunch of time there to try to pick out her teammates in front. She did deflect it in. And a quick one nothing lead. They'll keep her Katie Baker. Not much she could do about that wicked deflection. She did shut out IUP in the Ville's last game. And not the start that the Marauders would have wanted here today. But, of course, a lot of time left to try to equalize and go ahead. The night is young. That goal credited to Emily Alker for Bloomsburg. We'll give it to her. The sophomore from Pocono Mountain East High School. So Millersville now, great opportunity right back. Great response after the goal. Get it down into their attacking third. Earn that penalty corner where they have been so effective here in 2018. So they will insert right up top to Tarsi, but a whistle. Emma Butcher inserting. Again, finds Tarsi up top. Gets by her defender. And a clash of sticks. Butcher got it back with a foul. And it will be quickly back to the midfield. Quick restart. And that's going to be off the foot of Butcher. But it will stay Millersville ball. 
Madeline Stelly. She's got the patriotic headband, I believe. Part of that Millersville back line with Meredith Fagan and Jordan Goddard. That solid back three of the Ville. Here's Ortiz Kreiner back on the field. Just has that ability to get by defenders. Uses her body so well. Lots of stick skills. Millersville currently down one nothing, chasing the game at the moment. Nicely intercepted there, Meredith Fagan making a run forward, and now she'll have to sprint back to her right back position. This ball is going to pop up off Fagan. Here comes Bloomsburg. Into the circle it goes, but Gazio right there. And Millersville on the break. And break field. Could not receive it clean. Here's Bloomsburg. Krebs. Foul called. And again, the Ville cannot find break field on the wing to try to get it upfield. She'll let it roll out. And slowly but surely, Millersville trying to advance the ball. While we have a moment, I should remind everyone that Millersville Athletics thanks Iron Valley Real Estate for their continuing support of Millersville and our student athletes. Iron Valley Real Estate is the official real estate partner of Millersville Athletics. There's Bloomsburg back into the circle once more. Rolls over the end line. It will be 16 and out for the Ville. Marauders have quite a recent history of dominance over the Huskies. They've won 10 straight games against Bloomsburg. Last year was a 3-2 win in 2017. Eliza Mizak, two goals. Gazio had the other. But before that, and I did confirm this with the crack sports information department, uh, Bloomsburg had won 28 straight games against Millersville. So from 28 straight for Bloom, now 10 straight for Millersville. And the Huskies trying to... Get one back in the win column today. They are up a goal early here in the first half. In their last game, Bloomsburg dropped a 2-1 decision to Kutztown, who I mentioned earlier is the ninth-ranked team in the national coaches' poll is Kutztown. And Bloom, of course, eight even after that loss. Now Millersville, some space to work. It's out wide. And Bryn Erlocker still has it, and she will earn the penalty corner. Nice work from her. Some individual effort. To get it in that circle or in that corner. And we will see who will insert. Kira Breakfield. Second on the team in assists. Breakfield's got three on the season. Only bested by Erica Tarsi. She's got four assists. And here it comes. 
Up top, blasted in, deflected back by Hannah Bernard. Millersville still, still has it. And another foul. And another corner. Bernard, the sophomore goalie for the Huskies. Ow. Just a foul, not a corner. And a foul on Millersville. We're going back the other way. So a couple young goalkeepers in this game. Bernard, a sophomore. Katie Baker for Millersville, the freshman in front of Cage. She is from East Pennsboro High School. From the Mid-Pen Conference here in Central PA. Whistle on Millersville. Bloomsburg will restart. Millersville rotating players in and out pretty frequently. I'm going to make sure they have the right combination on the field. Fresh enough legs. Bloomsburg with it on the far side. Coach Shelley Barons from Millersville. Trying to find the right combo of players that are, is going to work for her this evening. 15 minutes gone just about in the first half. And now Millersville on the break. Goes ahead. Launched into the box, but that just rolls across the circle. Nobody for the Ville to receive it. There's Tarsi, chips it in. Bloomsburg has done a pretty good job defending uh, no, I find it. Uh, uh, the area just in front of the cage. They've been able to intercept some balls, knock them out fairly expediently. Some nice defensive work by Gazio over there. Now battle for the ball. One again by Gazio. But the whistle will send it back Bloomsburg's way. Pass back to the midfield. A lot of players jammed in centrally. Now Millersville, chance to break. And that pass goes a bit awry. Millersville trying to pressure whomever has the ball. Tarsi. Ball still alive for Millersville. Yeah, and that's going to be a hack at the stick in a penalty corner. Well earned, I believe that was Mizak. Could be mistaken. My old eyes sometimes deceive me. Will be Emma Butcher back to insert. We'll see who she picks out. Goes to Ortiz Kreiner. Now to Tarsi, 
loops it in, but again, denied by the goalkeeper, Hannah Bernard, knocking that ball out of the air. She did that as well earlier in the game. So the threat is defended by Bloomsburg. Huskies still holding on to the one nothing lead as they try to break this Millersville 10 game win streak. That is on the line. Bit too much contact there on the far side. Stays with Bloomsburg. Oh, but cut out well. Not too many yellow jerseys there, but we've in the circle. Bernard kicks it away. Millersville again. Another kick. The kick save. We've seen her knock balls out of the air. We've seen her kick away balls on the ground. Hannah Bernard doing it all right now for Bloomsburg. Brakefield couldn't get to that one. Probably a high stick call or a dangerous stick call, what have you. Many fouls in the rule book that even I don't know about. A little stick contact there. That'll be 16 and out. For Bloomsburg, you are watching the Ville Sports Network presented by UPMC. Field hockey this evening, Millersville Marauders and the Bloomsburg Huskies. Bloomsburg leading one to nothing. As we come up, about 15 minutes left to go in the first half. Millersville coach Shelly Barnes urging her team on. Would love to see them equalize before halftime. That ball bounces off the Bloomsburg stick. Going to be a Millersville restart. Does get to this far side. And Cure Breakfield. And that's going to be a whistle. And that passed too much weight on it. More substitutions in. As Barons wants her ladies to make a final push here. Some high energy play. Up the tempo. Barons this season, assisted by Ali McAvoy Campbell, former U.S. national team member. Barons has had some great success with some of those players helping out in the past. Katie Bam also assisted the Marauders in the past, formerly Katie O'Donnell. It will be a penalty corner for Millersville. And Breakfield back to take it and insert. This is their fourth corner of the game. Breakfield goes to the top. Ball launched in. That is a nice defensive play by Rachel Strockbein. Pretty much solo defended that corner. And Breakfield into the circle again. No whistle as she hits the turf. Now Ortiz Kreiner deflected off the Bloomsburg player. Surprised that there was no whistle there. They're saying it was a clean deflection off her stick. It looked like it might have got some of the body, but Bloomsburg will gain possession. 
trying to play the big ball downfield, but Millersville does get it back. And a long hit here. Or just a foul and a restart for the Ville. And the Bloomsburg player fell down, allowed Millersville to get it. Ball's loose in the circle. It's tracked down, crossed in front. Bernard there. Breakfield picks it up. Breakfield again. Still has it, and they'll call the foul on Breakfield. Bloomsburg blasted deep. Ortiz Kreiner, nice job. Such a force in the midfield. And that one looked like it went off the body of the Bloomsburg player. Probably played advantage there. Bloomsburg ahead. They've got some numbers. A lot of white shirts. Running into the offensive third. Ball one back nicely. By Madeline Stelly. That's a, that's a, that ball ripped into the circle from way out. Actually found its way into a dangerous position, but no damage done. 16 and out for the Ville. As we approach 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Again, both these teams three and one on the season. And this game will not count in the PSAC standings. It will only count for the overall records and some shifting around for the National rankings, possibly the NFHCA coaches poll. Populated by a bunch of PSAC squads. Six of them in the top ten. After this game, of course, Millersville next on the road at Mansfield on September 29th. That's a 6 o'clock start. And then PSAC conference action does begin at Westchester on October 3rd. Before they return home to take on IUP on October 6th. Tarsi tried to get the head there, did not have a lot of support. A lot of players in the midfield for Millersville. 
Definitely don't want to give up another goal. It's ahead of Tarsi. Now she's got some support. She's double teamed. Keeps it alive down the near side. Very well done. Still has to deal with two defenders, though. And it's one back. And they're probably going to say off the foot of Gazio. And Bloomsburg will restart. Fairly clean first half of action here. We didn't have that one card shown to Sol Ortiz Kreiner from Millersville. That resulted in the Bloomsburg goal. That play, one player advantage coming through. That ball finds nobody. Rolls over the end line. And ball played very long in the sky, trying to find Eric Tarsi. Could not. Of course, that lofted ball, one of the easiest ways to advance the ball by a number of yards. Let's try to... Oh, that pass. Almost found. Emma Butcher. And here's Ortiz Kreiner. With a burst into the circle, but. Couldn't find a teammate, took a tumble. She's shown the ability to just dribble her way into dangerous positions all season long. She plays a ton of minutes. Coach Barons knows how valuable she is. And here's Bloom back the other way. Looking for a second goal. Well, we'll not find it here. Stelly cuts it out. And it is fouled. The only goal of this game by Bloom, Bloomsburg's Emily Alker coming very quickly. And that one just rolls to the front of cage. Katie Baker heads up, stopped it there, just stepped on it with her foot. And Bloom again. Well, 
will be 16 and out for the Ville. Stelly ahead to Tarsity. Gazio's got it. Oh, almost a great pass. A little too much contact there. By Emma Butcher up top. So Bloom earns back possession under five minutes to go. Should be a very interesting halftime conversation for Millersville. Coach Barron's 10 straight wins against this Husky squad. They absolutely wanted to make it 11. We'll see what, if anything, they will change in that second half. They do have the advantage on penalty corners. They've been able to get it into the box, or into the circle, rather, and uh, create some opportunities, but that final product just hasn't been there yet. But it's a great sign the continued penalty corner parade. Here's Ortiz Kreiner again, able to just get past people. She's at the top of the circle and passes it in. Couldn't get the Gazio. And Tarsi will call the foul on her as the Bloomsburg player Went to the turf. The very wet turf here tonight. And then pass from Gazio. Will eventually find Butcher gets by her defender. She's in close. And yeah, that'll be a penalty corner. Ball chipped up off the leg. And again, the procession of corners for the Ville, their fifth of the game looks like Brakefield's going to take it. Again, she's had success assisting goals. Oh, she goes short to Gazio. And chipped into the middle. But again, Bloomsburg defense tried to get a little clever there. Normally you see teams send it up to the top of the circle. Try to get that quick blast on the cage, maybe deflection. Tried one deep from the playbook of Shelly Barron's. Did not work out that time. And the whistle is Ortiz Kreiner tried to win that 50-50 ball. Short time here in the first half. 
under just about two minutes to go. Some great end to end field hockey being played. You can tell these two teams very skilled. That's why they're both ranked nationally in that top ten. And Bernard out of her normal area to kick that one away. Exercising those legs a little bit. And here's Lexi Robeson. Finally into the game. And a foul called on Millersville. We've seen some sustained pressure here by the Ville late in this first half. Here's the break field into the circle. Centers, but no player there. Now, break field gets it back. Bernard comes out, but I'm going to call break field maybe. I don't know for what. Oh, it's one back, ball centered, break field, got there. But the ball dribbled wide. Yeah, the last touch by the Marauders, 16 and out for Bloom. Just under 30 seconds to go. Is there something late in the half here for Millersville? They're coming. Looking for that untimed penalty corner, perhaps. Bernard kicks it away over the end line. And that might do it. One more shot for Millersville. Oh, through the legs. Goes Robeson. And a quick restart here. Is there enough time? There is not. That is how the first half ends. Bloomsburg leading Millersville one goal to nothing. Although Millersville certainly looks capable of equalizing. We will return with some first half stats here on the Ville Sports Network presented by UPMC in just a bit. Stay tuned. Champions, no. Halftime stats there. 
Ville also dominating shots, 6-1. to one. And, of course, shots on goal, 4-1. to one. And Like I said, corners. And Bloomsburg goalie, Hannah Bernard, the sophomore, has had to make some saves. She's got four of them. Katie Baker, no saves credited. So that Millersville's defense able to support her so far. You have to think about what Coach Shelly Barons from Millersville talking about with her ladies. They've had the corners, just could not convert any goals from them. And that's definitely got to be a point of focus for Bloomsburg. You got your goal. All you have to do, defend, defend, defend. And I'm sure that's what we're going to try to see from them here in the second half. Should remind one. Our next broadcast this coming Friday, September 28th, it will be women's volleyball, Millersville hosting Lock Haven. So remember to join us for that 7 o'clock tip time for volleyball on Friday here on the Ville Sports Network. Brought to you, as always, by UPMC. Now, as I said in the first half, this series between Millersville and Bloomsburg has been all marauders lately. They've won 10 straight games. Bloom trying to get one back. Before that 10-game win streak, the Huskies have won 28 straight. 28. So Bloom's trying to start another streak. Perhaps, but we'll see what Millersville can do to stop them. A lot of balanced goal scoring for the Marauders this season. Eliza Mizak, Erica Tarsi, Sol Ortiz Kreiner, and Nadia Baradelli. Four goals each on the season. The scoring can come from anywhere. And we shall see what the plan of attack is here in the second half. 35 minutes to find an equalizer and maybe a winner for Millersville. We've got Brakefield and Annabelle Tierney, the Australian. On the right side, we've got Erica Tarsi and Alexis Gazio on the left side. And, of course, Eliza Mizak up front as well. Brakefield trying to track it down. She does. Still has it. Into the circle. And Mizak earns the penalty corner. Dream start here in the second half for the Ville. That's their sixth corner of the evening. And now we'll see if Coach Barron's guidance at halftime changes their name result here. Kira Brakefield will insert. She's standing to the right of the cage, as she did in the first half. Gets it up top, tar tar rolls by Tarsi, goes back to Erica. And now the shot, I believe it was a shot from Mizek, goes wide left. Millersville had the open look. Just a bit of a miss hit. But a bright start, nonetheless, from the Marauders. First half goal scored by Bloomsburg's Emily Alker. Here comes Millersville again. Still has it. It's Tarsi. Centers. Ball rolling around, still alive. Going to be a corner. So whatever that halftime talk was, looked like it worked wonders. Now seven corners in the game. Inserted up top. Again, not a clean reception. Tarsi does have it back. Shoots. 
And Gazio takes a blast. But again, deflected away. Bloomsburg has been able to get in front of those shots this evening. Millersville has it back, pushing a lot of players forward. And Bloom, yeah, they have the numbers with Millersville just having two or three defenders back. They've really got to play towards that counterattack. But things settle here. The ball bounces right in front of Katie Baker. She went to ground. Looks like just a restart here for Bloomsburg. Everybody back behind the ball for Millersville. Cannot concede that second goal. That's priority number one. Gazio, nice pass to Tierney in the midfield. What a foul. And here come the Huskies. Not a great pass, rolls out. Oh, and that pass, not crisp as well. Tarsi is fouled. Tumbling to the turf. Quick restart from Millersville. Thought they saw something. Now oh, they're right back to Bloomsburg. Gazio, some nifty maneuvers. And Tierney slipping a little bit on that wet turf. It's been a couple hours since the last rainfall, though. Ortiz Kreiner finds Tierney and finds Brakefield. Oh, nice move. Kira Brakefield. Tarsi look, got her stick on it, but there's not much behind it. Bloomsburg again defends just enough. Now a three on four break for the Huskies. Ball played deep. And a nice defensive play. I believe that was Goddard. Oh, but a shot. And the goal, the second of the game from the Bloomsburg Huskies. The quick shot. Gets by Baker. Just against the run of play, Bloomsburg able to strike just like the first goal quickly, just about five or six minutes into the half. Just like that, it's 2 nothing, Bloomsburg. So now it becomes very difficult for Millersville. They've got to get two here to tie this up. They will credit the goal to Erica Krebs, her fourth of the season, tying her for her team lead, along with Tessa Hoffman. Was just a rocket past Katie Baker. Not much she could do about it. Again, Millersville dominates possession, but just cannot get one past goalie Hannah Bernard yet this evening. Now the Ville again attacking. They've just got to get that final ball. Help it find the back of the cage. And a foul. This is going to be right on the edge of the circle. Alexis Gazio will restart. She wins it back. 
Two defenders on her. Still with it. And a penalty corner earned by Millersville. Eight corners for Millersville today. Zero for Bloomsburg. Yet the Huskies lead it 2 nothing on the scoreboard. Looks like Ortiz Kreiner will insert. See if that will switch it up. Into Gazio. Back up top. Gets by defender shot. Just wide left. I believe Mizek launched that. And again, the threat is controlled, is contained by Bloomsburg. Their defense and goalie Hannah Bernard, despite giving up eight corners to Millersville they've given up no goals and really that's what they'll be satisfied with Neville again long hit Into the circle comes Millersville. Oh, but just miscontrolled a bit on the stick. As we've got a change in front of Cage for Millersville. Katie Baker off. And I believe Christy Campana, another freshman. Is on. So Katie Baker takes a seat. And Campana on. Lofted ball into the midfield. And here comes Bloomsburg looking again for that counterattack. Still has it. Some danger. Campana almost tested early, and she could be here. Bloomsburg earning their first penalty corner of the game. We'll see who they decide. They haven't had one, so their their plan of attack not familiar quite yet for them. Looks like Alker will insert. Not received clean, but the shot still is off. Campana right there. And we'll be 16 and out for Millersville after defending the corner. Again, while we have a moment, should say that Millersville Athletics thanks Iron Valley Real Estate for their continuing support of Millersville and our student athletes. Iron Valley Real Estate is the official real estate partner of Millersville Athletics. Millersville chasing this game. They are down two goals in the second half against Bloomsburg, a matchup they have dominated. They have won 10 straight games versus Bloom. And if they want to make that 11, time is running out for them to get two goals. Got to start with just one, though. And we've seen Millersville earn a bunch of penalty corners. Eight to Bloomsburg's one in the game. 
but the Marauders have no goals to show for it. We've seen three different players insert on the penalty corners for Millersville as they try to find a combination that works. Still a lot of game left, 23 minutes to go. And a quick whistle there on the far side. Looks like against Millersville, Bloomsburg will have it. And again, a penalty corner for the Millersville Marauders. Ninth of the game. And I believe Kira Brakefield will insert. We've seen her go short with the insert. We've seen her go to the top of the circle. Goes to that right side, oh, the shot in. What a rocket. Erica Tarsi with one moment brings Millersville back to life, makes it a one goal game. An absolute cracker of a goal. Marauders finally able to convert on one of their corners. And Tarsi. Scores her fifth goal of the season. Goes into the team lead. Timeout on the field. We will step away here on the Vail Sports Network presented by UPMC. And I work at Orthopedic Specialists of Central Pennsylvania as a sports medicine physician. Some of the most common injuries I treat are concussions as well as soft tissue um, and joint overuse injuries. My goal is simply to get them better that is required to get there. I enjoy treating musculoskeletal injuries. I enjoy treating athletes. I enjoy treating people who have motivation to be their best self, to be their healthiest self, to allow them to get back to doing the things that they enjoy doing. It's John Murphy, and I work at Orthopedic Specialists of Central Pennsylvania as a sports medicine physician. Some of the most common injuries I treat are concussions as well as soft tissue um, and joint overuse injuries. My goal is simply to get them better regardless of what that is required to get there. I enjoy treating musculoskeletal injuries. I enjoy treating athletes. I enjoy treating people who have motivation to be their best self, to be their healthiest self, to allow them to get back to doing the things that they enjoy and loving. Welcome back to Christ Field at Beams Durfer Stadium. Field hockey here on the Ville Sports Network brought to you by UPMC. The Millersville Marauders with a huge moment moments ago off the penalty corner. Kira Brakefield to Erica Tarsi. And the rocket launches into the cage to make it 2-1. to one. Marauders still trail Bloomsburg. So now the Marauders, one goal away from equalizing this contest. Bloomsburg with it, though, in that very advanced position. They will earn a penalty corner of their own just the second of the game for the Huskies. Here we go. Inserted up top. Clean, but the shot will take a deflection and in. Wasn't the most powerful of shots, but just bounced in there. Rattled around. And it's a quick 3-1 out of the timeout and the quick penalty corner for Bloomsburg. All the effort Millersville took just to 
make it a one goal game. Well, it's back to a two goal advantage for Bloomsburg. The Huskies. The Huskies with the just ultimate response to that Millersville goal, getting one of their own from one of the few penalty corners they've earned. Here's Tarsi into the circle. It's going to be a restart. Ortiz Kreiner. Are they going to say she took it too quickly? Nevertheless. Brakefield with it, trying to surge in close. The pass and the shot bounces wide. Bloom back at their end. Foul on them. Marauders back the other way. Mizak. Keeping possession. Superb dribbling effort. Still has it. Has an option in breakfield in the center of the pitch. Ball pops out. No whistles yet. Very surprised, no whistles. But the ball rolls. Here we, it's restarted. Just dribbled into the circle again. And now a long hit for the Ville. And. Whistle. And the quick restart. Meredith Fagan finds Gazio. And a great job there. Emma Butcher earns the penalty corner. Double digits. For Millersville in the game, their 10th corner. They scored on their last one. They'll try to rekindle some of that magic. Kira Brakefield. Now on the left side of the cage, this is where she found Tarsi last time and put it in the back of the cage. Brakefield to Tarsi again. Not as clean a reception. Now center for Gazio off the stick of a Bloomsburg player. And bounces over the cage. Millersville will retain possession, of course. Just so much pressure from the Marauders. All game long, really. They just haven't had the... The ball has not just found the cage. That's it. Bloomsburg's found it three times. Millersville, Tarsi goes into the circle, still has it, reverse shot. Ooh, off the Bloomsburg player. Might have been off the head, off the shoulder. She pops right back up. Looks like she's okay, good to see. That ball can come in at great speeds. And of course, no headgear worn, no I wear a worn unless the players choose to put it on on the on the corners because I know the ball is going to be zooming in. Another corner for Millersville, number 11. Again, breakfield left side of the cage. Doing her pre-insert ritual. 
Finds Tarsi again. Now finds Gazio. Goes towards Cage. Oh. I believe that was. Yeah, Mizak trying to lift it in. Could not do it. And Bloomsburg trying to hold on here. Up two goals are the Huskies. Ortiz Kreiner trying to pick out a teammate. Goes to the left wing. And again, advanced position for Millersville. Into the circle again they go. You've got to have your head on a swivel if you're a Bloomsburg defender. Got yellow shirts running at you from every which way here in the second half. You would expect more of it with about 15 minutes to go in the game. Millersville is going to need two goals to even things up here in regulation. It's a tall order, but we've seen the Marauders earn all those penalty corners. Normally when there's this kind of discrepancy in those corners, 10 to 11 for Millersville, two for Bloomsburg, you would expect the Marauders really to be on the other end of the, the score line here. But no, it's Bloomsburg up 3-1. And the Marauders are chasing. Restart Bloomsburg, plays it long. Huskies still have it. Now one back by the Ville. Big ball into the midfield. Back and forth we go with possession here. See if Millersville can string a few passes together, string a few fouls together perhaps, but Ortiz Kreiner will draw the foul. Here she comes. Now well, restart too quickly, they say. I believe that's a bit of a different rule than you'll see from high school games around the county that instant self restart, but a timeout on the field. And we will step away for a bit here on the Ville Sports Network, presented by UPMC Bloomsburg, leading the Ville three to one. It's John Murphy, and I work at Orthopedic Specialists of Central Pennsylvania as a sports medicine physician. Some of the most common injuries I treat as well as soft tissue um, and joint overuse injuries. My goal is simply to get them better regardless of what that is required to get there. I enjoy treating musculoskeletal injuries. I enjoy treating athletes. I enjoy treating people who have motivation to be their best self, to be their healthiest self, to allow them to get back to doing the things that they enjoy doing and loving. Welcome back to the Ville Sports Network, presented by Broadcast. It's going to be a wild finish. Field hockey. Bloomsburg leading Millersville, 3-1. to one. Millersville has shown a propensity to earn penalty corners in this game. They've got 11. Bloomsburg has two. 
But the Marauders not able to convert on those chances. Just one goal from frequent, frequent chances. Emma Butcher. Marauders are going to go all out here to try to earn this result. They've won the last 10 meetings against Bloomsburg. Will that change tonight? Certainly could. But remember, regardless of the result, this will not count in the PSAC standings. That game that will count scheduled for Halloween, October 31st at Bloomsburg. Great stat for you as well from our crack sports information department. This is the most goals allowed at home for Millersville since October 16th of 2011. How about that? There's a shot and a goal. I believe Erica Tarsi again just gripped it and ripped it. It's 3-2. This one's not over yet, folks. Despite... All those goals given up, the offense coming through for the Ville. Tarsi's second goal of the game. And her, her sixth of the season. She is a complete player for the for the Ville. She's got four assists as well. Got to be up there in the PSAC point standings for sure. Erica Tarsi. Keeping her team in at one goal, and we're back to equal. 11 and a half minutes to go. Things just got interesting. Business just picked up. Can the Marauders get one more? Bloomsburg might be on their heels a bit. Here's Ortiz Kreiner to Bloomsburg. Huskies chasing her. Gets it out wide. And a foul one. And I'll get it back to Annabelle Tierney, the Australian. Nice dribbling. Down the sideline. Crosses. And a penalty corner won by the Ville. Nice job by Tierney. 12 corners in the game. Now, who will insert? Breakfield again. Can they replicate the previous goal from the corner? Tarsi's been feeling it. They don't give it to her yet. Shot in, kicked away. Hannah Bernard in front of Cage for Bloomsburg says, not that time. Tierney to Breakfield. So quick on the ball. Cut off by the Bloomsburg defender and foul called on Kira Breakfield. Millersville fighting to get it right back, though. Ortiz Kreiner, perhaps a little too physical. Card shown to Seoul, so she will have to sit. And again, an advantage here for Bloomsburg. They did score their first goal in such a situation. And of course, Millersville has to be careful pushing numbers forward because especially a player down. But here's a break from Millersville. Not a lot of yellow shirts in that advanced position, but might be enough. Uh, Tarsi had it poked away, but foul goes their way. And we'll all take a breath here as the Ville tries to restart. 
Alexis Gazio. Nice pass. And last touch by Bloomsburg. Will be a long hit. Gazio slips. Got to wonder if that turf is still a little soaked from all the rain earlier. Oh, and that pass backwards, not controlled well. Time ticking away here. We're coming up on eight minutes left. Fagan draws the foul at midfield. Now gets it ahead. Throw right to a Bloomsburg player. Now Bloomsburg on the counter has some players ahead. It's a dangerous spot for Millersville. Shot in. And just a cluster in front of Cage with a foul on Bloomsburg. Looked like Allie McKay was the one who sent it towards Cage. And just a scrum for it. But Millersville survives it, so that counterattacking threat from the Huskies. They've still got it. Bloom loves the ball in this half of the field because that means Millersville is no threat to equalize. Here come the Huskies again. Foul goes the other way. Millersville energizing this crowd with two Erica Tarsi goals. But is it too little too late? Ortiz Kreiner back in the game. Hit the turf. It will be a Bloomsburg corner. One of their few in the game. Number three for the Huskies. And like I said, they'll take all the time they need at this end of the field as we approach six minutes. Inserted, top of the circle. Quick shot. It'll be another on another corner. Often one corner. Oh, it will be just a long hit. Tierney, nice defensive play. And a foul on Bloom. Tarsi lets that roll. Gets it back. A lot of yellow shirts in the circle. Big chance here for Millersville. No whistle. It is. There's the whistle. Penalty corner, Millersville. Late in this game. Their 13th of the night. Five minutes to go. They will talk about it. We'll see what instructions Coach Barons sends to the ladies on the field. Sol Ortiz Kreiner will insert from that right side. And she does. Right up top to Tarsi. Oh, what a defensive play. Picks the pocket of Erica Tarsi. And just immediately ends the Millersville threat. For now, Bloomsburg holds. Here's Annabelle Tierney. Great effort on the near sideline. See what she does with it here. Defended by two players. Still has it. Uh, but it yeah, still has it in the corner. Three defenders around her. Chips it into the circle, but off a Husky player. Marauders maintain possession. 
as time continues to tick down. Again, like I said, this is the most goals, three, that Millersville has given up since 2011 here at home. Bloomsburg again. Reyes tries to smash that one downfield off a of marauder. And here they come again. Bodies flying everywhere. And now the Huskies have a chance. In there. Yeah, that one missed. That's going to be instant Millersville ball. And a quick counter opportunity. Spin, dribbled into the circle. That was Erica Tarsi looking to be the catalyst for the equalizing goal. But the ball will go to Bloomsburg. Put some mustard on that hit, but it rolls out. It's going to be. Back to Millersville at about the 40-yard line. And a foul quickly taken. Bloomsburg just wants to clear this ball by any means necessary at this point. No foul there on Erica Tarsi. And Bloomsburg... Tried to break out, could not. We got a stoppage of play, Sol Ortiz Kreiner down on the field. She reached to try to poke the ball away. Hope she's okay. Trainer called out. And we've got a Stoppage on the field with about a minute 40 to go now. As Kreiner worked on on the field, could be a great time to talk over strategy for Millersville. But we will take a quick break as well and return with the end of the game here on the Ville Sports Network presented by UPMC. Welcome back to the Ville Sports Network brought to you by UPMC. I'm Brian Cast here. Field hockey, Millersville, down a goal, 3-2 to two against the Bloomsburg Huskies. A minute 40 left for the Marauders to try to equalize this game. Can they do it? Let's find out. Annabelle Tierney dribbling through a couple defenders. And that's knocked away. We'll stay with Millersville. Marauders have to hustle. Meredith Fagan restarts. Tried to find Cure Breakfield. And the ball stays Millersville. And the whistle blows. Restart. I believe that's Emma Butcher. Tierney in the circle, but had last touch by the Ville. Under a minute to play. They're going to do it. They have to do it now. Bloomsburg just wants to clear this ball out of there. Breakfield wins it back. Kira dribbling in. Crosses. Tarsi tried to track it down. Just a sma hard smash from Bloomsburg defender. No whistle blown. Uh, this one restarted quickly. Under 30 to go. 
Oh, foul goes the other way. Bloomsburg tried the clear. Under 20 seconds to go. Marauders have it into the circle. Trying to draw that penalty corner by any means necessary. No whistles. And with just seconds left, ball into the circle. That is your ball game. The Bloomsburg Huskies hold on. A late charge from Millersville, but it's not enough. Bloomsburg wins it 3-2, to two, their first win over the Ville in their last 10 tries. So congrats to Bloomsburg. Well played by both squads. And 3-2 is your final score, of course. Join us here on the Ville Sports Network this Friday, the 28th, for some women's volleyball against Lock Haven. But until then, for our great crew out here tonight, I'm Brian Cass. You've been watching the Ville Sports Network, presented by UPMC. Imagine the possible. Science is so important to me. It's kind of what makes me who I am along with playing field hockey. The scholarships really helped me with focusing directly on my education and just playing field hockey, having fun with everything I do. I'll be uh, attending NC State University for 10 weeks out of the summer and I'll be learning pretty much how to be a research chemist, in turn also doing a lot of research for their university. It benefits me not only financially, but it, it makes me realize that there's somebody out there that cares about what I'm doing. It's not just about the financial support, it's about being the support for me and being the, the backbone for what I do and just knowing that they're there to support me in everything I have to do.